everyone, today's video is about when you have a nightmare. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going! You felt pain in your whole body. Your veins were burning as the flower was running through them instead of blood. You felt ice cold, yet you were covered in sweat. Your vision was blurry, and your ears full of sounds that didn't make any sense to you. All you felt was pain. You had no idea how long you had been here. All you knew was that it had been way too long. You lost all hope of ever getting out of this situation. You knew that you would die as a captive of the League of Villains. Are you doing this to me? You asked, trying to make out the people that were surrounding you. You heard laughter all around you. Do you have any idea how valuable we are? We're going to turn you into a weapon. Our weapon. You swallowed hard. But your throat was completely dried out. So instead, you broke out into coughing fat. You won't get away with this. Was all you could say before you felt another needle into your body with full force. Injecting more of the substance that felt like it was burning you from the inside. A loud and terrified scream could be heard throughout the dorm building of Class 3A. Every single student was woken up by the desperate sound that was echoing through the halls. Katsuki was up on his feet in mere seconds. He immediately knew who would let out the scream and wasted no time in making his way over to you. Your classmates were also coming out of their rooms. They were very confused and on high alert. Was there a villain attacking the dorms? But Katsuki knew better. Katsuki knew that there was no attack. You have just had another one of those nightmares that had plagued you ever since you had been captured by the League of Villains about four months ago. He quickly reached the other side of the building where the girls' room was located. He sprinted up the stairs and saw that a lot of your classmates had already been gathered in front of your door, unsure whether to knock or not. Get out of my way, extras! He scoffed and everyone was jumping out of his way immediately. He opened the door with the spare key of your room that you had given to him. You always locked the door, scared someone might enter and snatch you away again. The light of the hallway illuminated your dark room, and he immediately spotted your shaking figure curled up in your bed. It broke his heart to see you so terrified. Up to this day, you hadn't talked about what exactly happened to you. Every time someone would ask, you would get a terrible panic attack and stop talking immediately. Katsuki had no idea what could have happened to you that you were still unable to talk about. He had been captured by the League of Villains as well. Sure, they had tied him up, leaving him unable to move. But that was about it. He knew her buddy had been in a terrible state and that you had lost a lot of blood. He knew you had bounds, but he didn't know what kind of torture they had put you through. He immediately closed the door, leaving the both of you in the dark. He wasted no time in getting over to where you were sitting on your bed and sat down next to you, putting you in his strong arms. Come here, love. It's okay. I'm here now. He whispered. He desperately clung to his shirt, and sob bitterly. Thank you, was all you could bring out. He was sitting there with you in his arms, gently rocking you back and forth, constantly kissing your soft forehead, and whispering that everything was okay. He didn't know if it really helped or not, but that was all he could think of. While he was holding you, he was looking through the dark room. The moon was shining through the window, illuminating the room just enough for him to see the open bottle of bells on your nightstand. The bottle had been knocked over, and some of the bells had been spelled out. He immediately freaked out. Lion, what are those bells? You sniffled the bed. They help me sleep. You said quietly. Why is the bottle knocked over? And why are so many of them missing? You swallowed hard. Katsuki, I... He didn't know what to say. The look on his face broke your heart. 
You had never seen him so upset before. Were you trying to fucking overdose? He didn't know what to think or how to feel. He knew you were hurting, but he had no idea just how bad it was. You didn't say anything. You didn't know what to say. So instead, you just cried silent tears that were running down your cheeks. When he realized that he was right, and he actually had tried to end it all, his body felt like it was falling apart. His chest was hurting, and his mind went to overdrive. Please, you need to talk to me. You don't have to go through this alone. If you're hurting, then I'm here to take your pain away. Please tell me what's wrong. He pleaded, his voice cracking heartbreakingly. You could tell he was about to cry. You felt like you were the worst person to walk on earth. You hated yourself for making Katsuki, the love of your life, go through so much distress and pain. All because you couldn't deal with what had happened to you. But couldn't you get over it? What was that had happened to you still haunting you every waking minute, every second, and every time you close your eyes at night? Katsuki, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Katsuki. I just can't do this anymore. I'm not strong enough. This is eating me up inside, and I'm so tired. I'm tired. I just want to end this all. You explained quietly. His eyes were full of pain and sorrow. Just what was it that they did to you? How did they manage to break your spirit like this? You told him everything. You told him about the torture, the needles, and injections. You told him about the thing they said to you, the laughter, and the beating. It was like everything that you had kept inside was flowing out of your mouth like a waterfall. Telling Katsuki about what had happened to you felt like a massive weight had been taken off your shoulder. For the first time in months, it felt like you weren't alone in this. The reason you had talked about it before was because you didn't want to burn it anyone, with the knowledge of your torture. But opening up to your boyfriend really helped. You shifted a little bit in his arms to be more comfortable and feel closer to him. He lets you move around as much as he needed to, finding it adorable how you were trying to get comfortable in his arms. After a couple of minutes, he had found a good procession and let out the content sigh. Katsuki looked down at you, one of his large hands stroking your soft hair. There's no need to be afraid anymore, my hand, because I'm here and I'll protect you. I will never leave your side. He said, leaning down and kissing your forehead. You can take my word for it. I'll be right here with you until the very end. He looked up at him and smiled a genuine smile for the first time in what felt like centuries. I really didn't know how I managed to trick you into being my boyfriend. He said, admiring his handsome face. He scoffed. You got it backwards, love. I'm the lucky one. I could spend all day talking about all the things that I love about you, and it will still not do any justice. You grand. I wish you would show this cute side of yours more often, Katsuki. He lightly flicked your nose, and you're pretty sure he was blushing madly in the dark. Shut up, don't get used to it. He said, trying to sound annoyed, but failing. I love you so much, Katsuki. Was the last thing you managed to say before you fell asleep in his arms. He smiled down at you. I love you more. He whispered, watching you sleep and stroking your hair absentmindedly. And I'll always be here to protect you, my man. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.